We begin today with a dramatic end to two standoffs in Paris. Two hostage crises ended when French security forces simultaneously brought an end to the standoffs. The two brothers allegedly responsible for the tragic murder of 10 Charlie Hebdo journalists and two policemen are now dead. Also, a third gunman said to be responsible for the death of the policewoman who was killed the same day, also now dead. It all played out in two different locations, one in a kosher market in Paris where four hostages were killed and 15 were freed. Then in northeast France, the two al-Qaeda-linked brothers took an employee hostage while hiding at a printing plant. I was joined earlier by RT correspondent Peter Oliver, who was on location as the deadly standoff unfolded. I first asked him to fill us in with the latest on the ground. What we saw uh, a few hours ago now um, was after a very, very long standoff between um, the anti-terror forces and the uh, Karachi brothers uh, that had been the subject of a manhunt since those shootings on Wednesday was uh, when we waited for a long time. The standoff went on for a while, but when the action came, it was blisteringly quick. As soon as we got news that apparently shots had been fired and some explosions had been heard, I came running down to an area just behind me, which is very close to the warehouse where that um, where that siege was taking place. Before I could get anywhere near a huge line of. Um, of uh, police vehicles, some of them unmarked police cars, clearly containing um, well, what looked like uh, uh, anti-terror cops, heavily armed anti-terror cops. Uh, they were followed by the gendarmerie, the um, the ambulance, the fire brigade, all rushing to that scene. Now. What, this, what it does seem is that there was a lot of planning and a lot of thought went into trying to put an end to this in the best way possible for the hostage that was inside. Uh, the special forces that were used, they uh, crept into positions and then when they knew that they were in the right positions that they planned to be, then they opened fire. Now, this prompted the Karachi brothers to then make something of a, 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 a last charge, if you will, out of the building towards the, um, the waiting other uh, anti-terror police who then cut them down uh, with fire from their weapons. And now that the immediate threat appears to be over, what are the next steps for authorities in France as they hunt down the female accomplice? Well, that, this uh, is the next step, clearly, to, for, to hunt down that uh, woman who had been named. Uh, and if her picture's being bandied around everywhere in France right now. There will be a, an, another uh, huge hunt on to try and track her down. But it, it, can't, it, it can't go without saying just how important it was to, um, to France as a whole and to the, um, the law enforcement authorities to, to catch or to, as it turned out, to kill uh, these two brothers. But the, the next step after that now that's going to be the biggest step because there is going to be a lot of questions asked about how how this all how this whole operation was allowed to go into play. Now it's worth noting that both of these brothers were very well known to authorities. Both appeared on terror watch lists both here in Europe as well as in the United States. They were both on um, uh, they both they were both on no fly lists. Um, in fact, uh, the elder brother, it's understood, had gone to uh, Yemen in order to receive training in a terrorist camp there. The younger brother, he was even more well known. He was, a co he was convicted on terror charges a few years ago after he was found to be guilty of uh, being trying to funnel um, European jihadis into the Middle East. So these people were very well known to the authorities and the equipment that they had. These weren't things that you can buy at a hunting store. They had um, high velocity assault rifles. These, they had um, a, what some sources are saying that they had a, a grenade launcher and maybe an RPG. These are very serious pieces of kit that you just can't buy uh, if, as a normal person in Europe. They had to have had some help in getting that. They had to have had some help being organized. There's got to be questions asked about how they were able to get that help, considering the reputation they already had. Peter Oliver, we have to leave that right there. Thank you so much. That was correspondent Peter Oliver. Okay, thank you. And at the other tent scene, a kosher grocery store in Paris where the gunman and four hostages have died, RT's Polly Boyko is on location and has the details.
Well, an almost three-day campaign of terror here in Paris came to a nail-biting finale a little bit earlier on with four hostage deaths, the gunman killed, and up to 16 hostages freed from that kosher supermarket in eastern Paris. But uh, it all started just several hours ago when uh, a gunman of West African origin uh, armed uh, walked into this uh, uh, kosher mini-market and took hostages including women and children. He then made threats saying that he would uh, kill hostages if uh, the other siege that was taking place in Dan Martin resulted in a police storm. Uh, at the time, the area had been completely sealed off. Armed police swarmed into the neighborhood. Shops, uh, schools evacuated. Then very suddenly, the storm of the shop began simultaneously with the other siege that was up in Dan Martin. Uh, and over in minutes, uh, then when we heard the results of uh these uh, host some hostages freed very poignant pictures of people uh, being marched away from uh, that shop where everything was taking place. But Parisians are now coming to terms uh, with what's happened. It's been incredibly tense uh, in the capital, especially during those two sieges. We've had uh, false alerts of a shooting by the Eiffel Tower uh, where people had to be evacuated, uh, trains, transport, whole areas sealed off. There's been a security lockdown. But at the same time, a lot of the people that we've spoken to uh, say that they refuse to be afraid in the, f in the face of these terrorist attacks, despite uh, the very dramatic events unfolding. But what there are concerns over are the repercussions for uh, French society, uh, worries about further stratification as a result of the events of the past three days. That was RT's Polly Boyko. And continuing with team coverage, we go now to RT producer Bianca Fashini. She's live in Washington, D.C. with more on the U.S. response to what's happened in France the past several days. Bianca, how is the U.S. responding to these terror attacks in France? Right. So following the terrorist attacks in Paris, U.S. authorities are trying to understand how this affects our national security. White House spokesman Josh Ernest said that the president was briefed during a flight back on Air Force One after a short appearance in Phoenix on Thursday and on Friday pledged U.S. support to France after an appearance in Tennessee um, shortly after he visited the French embassy in Washington. Now on Sunday, Attorney General Eric Holder will be traveling to Paris to speak with French authorities about counterterrorism efforts on the same day that they plan to hold a unity rally where elected officials are expected to walk alongside citizens in a, a peaceful protest against the attacks. Now U.S. officials have confirmed that two of the suspected gunmen, Sharif and Saeed Kouachi, were on the no-fly list, as Peter had just mentioned, among nearly 40,000 other names. And officials also said that Saeed traveled to Yemen in 2011 to receive terrorist training from an al-Qaeda camp where Anwar al-Awlaki, a then senior figure in al-Qaeda, had encouraged the killing of cartoonists that had insulted Islam. Now, the Department of Homeland Security said that there isn't a direct threat to Americans following these attacks, but President Obama did emphasize that the attacks underscore the importance for Americans to continue supporting France. Thank you for that, Bianca. That was RT producer Bianca Faschini.